Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. So happy to be here. I am Marie McKenzie. I've been a registered nurse for, oh, almost 25 years. I'm an advocate, sexual assault nurse examiner, nurse educator now, author. I'm an award-winning, number one best-selling author. My first book is my memoir, Things That Keep Me Up At Night. Share my journey from childhood sexual abuse to being a thriving, surviving adult. I, my second book I co-authored with the amazing Danae Kai, 90 Days of Pleasure, is a part of the nine book series, independent books. It's a little steamy in some pages, but <laughs> just a little. <laughs> just a little. Um, I'm very proud of my memoir. It has helped open the doors for a lot of ladies who have um, gone through sexual trauma, help them to find their voices, and become unstuck. I like to call, um, help them get out of being shut in, mm. silently hurting due to unresolved trauma, internalizing needlessly, needlessly because there is help out there. So if you suffered this kind of trauma, or any trauma or loss, and you lose your purpose in life, you don't have to be shut in, there is help out there. I just want to read a little portion of this book. I grew up in a large extended family in the parish of Clarendon, Jamaica, but wasn't born there. However, life prior to that is a complete blur. My maternal grandparents lived in England for many years and retired to Jamaica. Her five-bedroom house was always filled with people, family, and friends. On special occasions, we congregated at my grandparents' house, which was the venue for all major happenings. One such event occurred in the summer of 1973. One female family member was there for home birth. The women were excited and busy with the preparations for the baby. While everybody was rushing around, I sat on the living room sofa reading a book. I had started reading at an early age, so I always had a book in hand. The man seated beside me was there for the birth and not directly involved in the process. In those days, men were not involved in the birthing process. They were just there for company. <laughs> um, so he was reading the newspaper, which he spread across his legs and eye. The back of the sofa was against the bedroom wall where the birthing process was occupied. The woman in the labor was moaning and groaning in obvious distress. One of the doors leading in and out of the room was right where we sat and anyone could have entered at any moment. Since this was their first child, I expected him to show some concern for his wife. He didn't give any indication that he had hurt his wife so that he was aware of what was happening so close to where we sat. The pervert was bold. I hadn't thought about it then, but it was obvious that this was not his first rodeo. He had to have done it before without any repercussions. Without saying a word, he shifted closer as his hand crept up the inside of my legs underneath the paper. I was paralyzed with shock and fear as he attempted with his fingers between my legs. The only thing I had the strength to do was clamp my legs shut. However, he kept trying to force his hand <coughs> in between my thighs. I could not relent and I could not stand. His fumbling seemed to have gone on for hours, although I'm sure it was only minutes. When he realized I wasn't moving or opening my thighs, he laughed, pulled away, and continued reading the paper as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened. I was 11 years old. 